So the first thing, one reader uh, in the in the industry, we have what's called a log line, which is kind of a, a one sentence summation of what they feel the story is about. So they, you know, when part of their coverage, they will write a log line. So this is the log line from one reader. A young father must choose between the straight and narrow religious lifestyle of his family or the more exciting but dangerous street life of a drug dealer. So that's how this person, and in this case, I'll go ahead and tell you that we're referencing Caleb here, you know, the main character of Caleb. All right, so this is how one person sees it. Um, another reader presents this log line. After an injury sidelines his professional basketball dreams, a young man turns to a life of crime and drug dealing to support his family. So that's how this particular person kind of sums up the whole story. All right. Um, here is one person's comments about the story. Overall, this is what they write. Life or death is a crime drama that attempts to blend two seemingly unmatchable genres, urban and religious. You know, and that's interesting in itself because in a way, you know, you, you <laughs> seemingly unmatchable, I think it's pretty accurate. While most religious stories that attempt to depict the problems with street life fail to adequately present the hard edge lifestyle, life or death actually succeeds in making the crime world feel authentic. And I'm glad they wrote that. I'm glad they're seeing that. Because as I mentioned in one of the previous live streams, um, for me, this is, it's very personal. I think you guys heard me talk about on, I believe it was on your show, Uncle Stu, when we were talking about how there we have a lot of our young people, especially our young brothers who find themselves in these situations where they are, you know, pulled into the streets, I like to say, for from different reasons. You know, these are young people. And They've got a lot of different reasons why they're doing it. Um, and the street life, we can't act like the street life ain't here. It's definitely here. And we got more yeah. young brothers than we care to um, either admit, maybe some of us even recognize, who turn in that direction because they see it as the only way they can do basic things, like feed their family. You know what I'm saying? Just the fundamental things, just to get by. Okay, I'm going to keep it going. Um, so someone, a different reader, wrote a, their perspective on the title. Life or Death is a very good title, effectively bridging the two seemingly incompatible genres of the urban crime drama and the religious film. With, with either genre, individually, this title would work well. But with this hybrid crossover approach, it works even better. That was what they think about it. And I feel like that's very accurate too, um, for a lot of different reasons. And we, we get into the, really the significance of, of the title as we get into the story. But, um, but I think that, that observation was accurate. I'm gonna keep going. All right, this one's a, this particular uh, one is a little bit longer. But again, if we want to talk about what is life or death, then I want people to know this is what I want. I want people to know what we're getting into um, here. All right. Life or death is a particularly risky property is what they say. With its gritty, edgy depiction of a life of crime, it threatens to put off religious viewers. And with its heavy religious tones, it could repel audience of the urban crime dramas. The fact that those things could happen makes this script somewhat dangerous. But more important is the fact that the opposite could happen. It could potentially be a wildly successful crossover venture, effectively bringing two large markets together. That, possi that possibility makes life or death a potentially very lucrative gamble should a producer with the inclination to roll the dice be found for it. Since it is at its core a gamble, that's what this person thinks, um, however, everything else about it needs to be spot on perfect. And the author could improve his odds greatly by restructuring the script to completely remove the nonlinear timeline and the chapter system. I'll talk about that after I read this, uh, which do little to help the story and quite a bit to hurt it. While this script is getting a pass here, it is only because it needs another draft. The main characters are strong and much of the dialogue powerful. In fact, the writing here is excellent, so I'm giving the script 
consider for the writer. The structure needs to be taken care of, however, before life or death is able to become the marketable script it could and should be. Now, let me just say, without getting too deep into what they were talking about there, is I took that advice for what we're, what we're doing here. That particular advice, advice of telling this story in a non-linear non fashion, I had my reasons for it. But I'm going to, I really considered that and thought it completely through. And I'm going to take that person's advice for a lot of reasons. And you guys will see that coming up. So, um, so that's part of the reason why we have, you know, experienced readers kind of read these things. You, you know, some things they mention and critique, you understand where they're coming from and you kind of hold to what you think your vision is. And then sometimes you get critiques that you feel is valuable. That's going to be helpful. And of course you get, you better be open to receive the critique that, you know, people are, critiques that people are making if you think it's going to make your work stronger. All right. All right. So that one was long. I'm going to finish this up. Again, this is me trying to be very thorough with letting everybody know uh, what this story is about. We got two more and then I'm going to open it, open it up for any comments. So we had a, someone right, right here about what they felt like the premise and marketability of the premise um, was about. All right, and this was personal. They wrote this directly to me. I think you managed to achieve most of the concerns that you listed on your entry form. I did feel that your story was very realistic and insightful and think that it does reach out across cultures. People go to the movies. And remember, this was started out as a, as a film script, as, I, as I've told you, um, because they are primarily interested in stories about the human struggle and human condition. You've hit a, a universal note in that it's part of the human condition to struggle between doing what's right and doing what's easy and not necessarily good. You say you want the subject matter to be unflinching, but not vulgar or gratuitous. While I find your opening very gritty and enormous intent, one thing that I, and then I cut it off because they were going too deep into it and it was gonna start, they would start telling them what the story is going on. <laughs> so um, here, um, I just want, want to really point out here what I like about this um, critique is that it's acknowledging that this this central struggle here and it's saying that I did a good job of making sure that it's prevalent of doing what's good versus doing what's easy and um, you know making the right choices versus making choices that are easy or or, or even choices that you know you shouldn't be making um, that is part of a, a central theme when it comes to uh, the story that we're telling. All right, and you'll see that play out. And then I'll read this last one and then I can open this up for anybody. Um, commerciality, this is someone else commenting on how commercial they think this concept might be. Scripts, religious themes and sermonizing combined with well-written street scenes make an interesting mix. Frankly, the reader, that's the person who's reading this, is unsure as to the commercial potential here, because this is indeed an unusual combination. However, the reader believes that if the story works, then this genre melding could actually be a big plus for the writer. In short, commercial potential could be strong with certain producers if the writer is able to address some of the issues discussed herein effectively. All right, so again, you have a different writer kind of acknowledging this, this, dual, this dual thing that I'm trying to do with this story. Um, obviously, I feel like um, you know, I'm, I'm going after it. I feel like this is something that I think has the potential to hit a lot of people um, where they are, um, change or at least influence people positively and, and be something that a lot of people, you know, will pay attention to and be affected by. It's, you know, of course, that's why I'm doing it. Um, so as we move forward with the way that we're doing it now, as opposed to a film, um, I think that in an interesting way, this has an opportunity to really get that power out. Because when we do these episodes, we're not going to just have these episodes, you know, do them, we're going to rehearse them, and then we're going to have them, and we'll put them out there in, in a live environment. But we're leaving the channels open. So right after the, we finish with what we do, we're opening it up for the audience to then call in and have an immediate sort of back and forth dialogue with the creators, that's myself as well as you all, 
to, you know, talk about what it is that they've seen and how it affected them and whether or not a character, you know, Courtney, your character might do something that you, you know, like, okay, that's my character. I, I, I wouldn't do it quite like that. Or maybe you would do it exactly like that character, you know, but you have an opportunity as an actor and a, and, and a, cre a fellow creator in the process to, to offer whatever your insights are about the story and about your character. And that's across the board, you know, and, and really just leaving it open for everybody to connect. What's so cool about it is that when we go to a movie or we see these movies or we watch things at home, we are in our own little box, so to speak. And, you know, we receive things how we are. But when you collectively can all watch something, then I think we all have the, and it opens up an opportunity to collectively share either experiences or think insights that, you know, like your neighbor would not have necessarily thought of. But for, hey, now, boom, it's, it's open. You, you know, you're asking the director, you're talking to the, the, the people who are creating it and saying, this is what we're doing. So, um, so this is what, this is part, and this is not, the, not just that part, but everything else, you know, the acting side of it. You know, we're gonna have people who, you know, are gonna wanna ask questions about the nuts and bolts. You know, what's the approach? that you know that you're taking towards fulfilling the character what's the reason why you wrote this this way and those kinds of things so it's just going to be wide open for the interactivity um as we go um episode to episode as we unveil the story